Imagine a world where Iran and Israel, two major powers in the Middle East, are at war. What would be the potential consequences? Let's pause for a moment to consider the geopolitical location of these two nations. Iran and Israel, both situated in the cradle of civilization the Middle East, have been at the core of historical tension for decades. Iran, with its vast landscape, borders several countries and holds an influential position in the region. Israel, on the other hand, though small in size, is a powerhouse with a formidable military and technological prowess. These two nations have had a strained relationship to say the least. Their discord stems from a complex web of political, religious, and ideological differences that date back to the mid-20th century. But what if these tensions were to escalate into a full-blown war? The global impact of such a war could be tremendous. Economically, it could send shockwaves through global markets. Iran controls a significant portion of the world's oil reserves, and any disruption in its output could send prices skyrocketing, affecting economies worldwide. Israel, a global leader in technology and innovation, could see its progress hampered, causing ripples in industries far beyond its borders. A war of this magnitude could also result in a severe refugee crisis. The Middle East, already home to millions of displaced individuals due to ongoing conflicts, could see a surge in the number of people forced to flee their homes, exacerbating an already critical humanitarian situation. Moreover, the involvement of other nations is almost a given. The Middle East is a geopolitical hotspot, and any major conflict there invariably draws in global powers. Allies would be called upon, treaties invoked, and the possibility of a wider conflict would loom large. As we delve into this hypothetical scenario, remember this is a situation the world hopes never to witness. In the following scenes we'll explore the potential progression of this unthinkable war, its escalation, aftermath, and the takeaway messages we should all keep in mind. But for now, let's take a deep breath and hope that diplomacy and dialogue prevail over discord and destruction. In the initial stages of war, both nations would aim to strike critical infrastructure and military assets. The opening moves in this high-stakes chess game could be pivotal and would certainly be destructive. Let's take a closer look at the military capabilities of both nations. Iran on one hand boasts a formidable ballistic missile program. Its arsenal includes short, medium and long-range missiles, some of which are capable of reaching as far as Israel. These missiles are more than just weapons, they're a statement of Iran's strategic intent and a symbol of its military prowess. On the other hand we have Israel, a nation that has invested heavily in advanced defense systems, the Iron Dome, for instance, is designed to intercept and destroy short-range rockets and artillery shells. The David Sling and Arrow missile defense systems are meant to counter medium and long-range threats respectively. These systems serve as a testament to Israel's commitment to its security and sovereignty. As for potential targets, both nations have their sights set on each other's critical infrastructure. For Iran, the strategic focus could be on Israel's population centers, military installations and nuclear facilities, Israel on the other hand, might target Iran's nuclear facilities, oil refineries and missile sites. The strategies employed by both sides would be both offensive and defensive. Iran might launch a barrage of missile strikes to overwhelm Israel's defense systems, while Israel would likely rely on its superior intelligence capabilities to preemptively strike key targets in Iran. But it's important to remember that these initial attacks would be just the opening salvos. They would serve to establish control, disrupt the enemy, and set the tone for the rest of the conflict. And while these strikes would be devastating, they wouldn't determine the outcome of the war. The early stages of the war would be devastating, but they would only set the stage for what's to come. As the war progresses, we could expect an escalation, with both sides digging in for a prolonged conflict. This isn't simply about a war of words or a battle of egos. It's about two nations, each with its own unique history, culture, and political landscape, locked in a struggle that could potentially span years if not decades. Now let's consider the chessboard that is the Middle East. If Iran and Israel go to war, it's not just those two countries that will be affected. The region is like a tightly wound spring with each nation connected to the others in complex and often unpredictable ways. The likelihood of additional nations getting involved is high. Some might be drawn in directly responding to calls for aid or acting on long-standing alliances, Others might get involved indirectly, offering financial support, weapons or even just tacit approval. The potential for a wider regional conflict is real. A war between Iran and Israel could be the spark that ignites the tinderbox. The consequences would be felt far beyond the borders of those two nations, echoing throughout the Middle East and potentially even further afield. 
And let's not forget about the non-state actors, the various militias and terrorist groups that operate in the region. They could see a war as an opportunity to advance their own agendas, adding yet another layer of complexity and danger to an already volatile situation. This is not a scenario anyone wants to see unfold. A prolonged war would be devastating, not just in terms of the lives lost and the infrastructure destroyed but also in terms of the social, political and economic upheaval it would cause. In short, a war between Iran and Israel would not be contained within the borders of those two countries. It would ripple out, touching every corner of the Middle East, and potentially even beyond. A prolonged war would not just be a tragedy for the people of Iran and Israel, but for the entire region. After the guns fall silent, the real cost of the war becomes apparent. The echo of the last missile fades and the dust of ruined cities begins to settle. But the aftermath, it's no less grim than the conflict itself. It's here that the human toll starts to unfurl, revealing a chilling tableau of suffering and loss. Consider the human cost. The lives lost are not just those on the battlefield but countless civilians caught in the crossfire. Homes become rubble, schools become memorials, and entire neighborhoods vanish into thin air. The casualty count could reach the hundreds of thousands if not more. Then, there are the displaced people, millions potentially, forced to abandon their homes, their lives and all they've ever known. They're left to wander in search of safety, their futures uncertain, their pasts irrevocably shattered. The loss of human life and livelihood is a tragedy that's hard to comprehend, let alone quantify. The economic toll is another beast. The financial cost of war, of rebuilding is astronomical. It's not just about replacing what was lost, it's about reviving economies that have been thrown into chaos. It could take years, decades even, for both nations to recover. The impact would reverberate across the globe, disrupting markets and sending shockwaves through the world economy. And then there are the geopolitical ripples. A war of this magnitude would inevitably shift the balance of power in the region. Alliances could be redrawn, and new conflicts may arise from the ashes of the old. The world as we know it could change in ways we can't even begin to predict. The aftermath of a war between Iran and Israel would be a devastating scenario, leaving scars that could last for generations. It's a sobering thought, a grim reminder of the true cost of conflict. Because when the guns fall silent, the echoes of war linger on, shaping the world and the people within it, in ways that are impossible to erase. While this is a hypothetical scenario, it underscores the importance of diplomatic solutions to international disputes. Let's take a step back and reflect on what we've just explored. A potential war between Iran and Israel. It's a chilling thought. But it's absolutely crucial to understand the gravity of such a situation. The unrest, the destruction, the loss of countless lives, and the destabilization of an already volatile region. This is not just about two nations. The ripple effects would be felt globally, impacting economies, politics and societies far beyond the borders of the Middle East. But why are we talking about this? Because we need to understand that war is not a solution. It's a failure. A failure to communicate, to understand, to negotiate, to compromise. It's a failure of diplomacy. And it's a failure that comes with a hefty price tag in lives, resources, and stability. We live in a world that's more interconnected than ever before. What happens in one corner of the globe can impact us all. That's why it's so important to advocate for diplomatic solutions. Because diplomacy is about dialogue, about understanding, about finding common ground and working towards peaceful resolutions. And this isn't just about governments and politicians, it's about us. It's about fostering a culture of understanding, of empathy, of respect for diversity. We can all play a part in this, by educating ourselves, by engaging in constructive conversations, by challenging prejudices and stereotypes. Let's remember, a war between Iran and Israel is not inevitable. It's a choice, and it's a choice that can be influenced by the actions and attitudes of individuals, communities, and nations around the world. So let's choose dialogue over division, understanding over intolerance, peace over conflict. Let's choose to learn from our past, to strive for a better future, to believe in the power of diplomacy and the potential for peaceful coexistence. In our interconnected world, a war between Iran and Israel would be a disaster not just for these two nations, but for the entire world.